And suddenly I see all my um, comments on the TikTok are Spanish, Spanish, Spanish. I was like, wait, why? Why? <laughs> like, I, I'm happy about it, but I, mean, I was just like confused. Mm -hmm. Come to Mexico City, come to Mexico City. And I was just like going along the street and people ran to me. They built like, I thought we, we needed security so I could walk. I was like, yo, this is, I, I felt like Justin Bieber for like an hour. I was like, yo, that's crazy. What's happening? Yeah. And it's like, wait, I'm the little guy from Germany. And suddenly Ellie Gooding's texting me. For and then me? I... Yeah. And, yeah, and then I got the chance, uh, got the chance to meet her in um, London. On the one side, the chain smokers were texting me. It's like, okay, that's crazy. And then I was in, in Ibiza, so he was like inviting me backstage to his room. Ooh. I was like meeting TS, and he's such a nice guy. He's like in the industry for so long. Yeah, it's crazy. Imagine a song causing an earthquake. <laughs> pues bienvenidos a Creadores Anchil. El día de hoy estamos en un episodio en el que vamos a hablar con un DJ internacional. Segundo capítulo que grabo en inglés. Uh, Bond, welcome, welcome hola, to hola. Mexico. <laughs> welcome back to Mexico. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. How, how's your Spanish? Um, yeah, I'm un poco, un poco, un poco. <laughs> no, but, but uh, unfortunately not very good. But yeah, I, but I set myself a goal is to learn Spanish that well that I can go to a restaurant and order food yeah. and talk to the waiter and all that. That's cool. So, This that's is it. your second time in Mexico. Second time in Mexico. I. Uh, for the people that don't know first, I was going to start talking about, uh, yeah, just introduce a little bit about you, who you are, what you do, why yeah. are you here in Mexico? Uh, so I'm Levi and I perform music under the name Band. And I'm originally from Germany and I've been doing music for like 10 years now, I would say, and really struggled getting that one song that had helped me to get a bigger audience. And then Mexico came in. So <laughs> I posted, started to posting my music on TikTok. Uh, since December last year and I posted a song it went well I was like okay I should keep going with TikTok um, a month after on January I posted clouds and it was like really working but not that crazy like it is now uh -huh. and suddenly I see all my um, comments on the TikTok are Spanish Spanish, Spanish. I was like wait why, why? <laughs> like I, I'm happy about it by I mean, it was just like confused. Mm -hmm. And then I saw that it, like people from Mexico said like, come to Mexico City, come to Mexico City. And I looked at my Spotify sets and everything was from Mexico. Okay. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. Um, yeah, that what's song, happening? That song is played a lot in like in, in playlists. Yeah. And people really liked like your, your music. That's cool. But it's funny because I didn't know that Mexico loves EDM music. I was like thinking they, they like, like more hip hop or like local music. Yeah. But then I was super astonished by it. And that's how I ended up going to Mexico twice now just yeah. to play shows. And the cool thing is we I played, if I played a show today, I played in total three shows and two of them were free. One of them was a concert where you had to buy tickets. But I really liked it because like people say that um, Like, not everybody has money here, mm -hmm. so it's very cool to see that artists can, like, you can go there as a fan, you don't have to pay money, you can just go to, uh, to the show for free with all your friends and have, to, and have a good time in your life, so. Yeah, that's so cool. Like, yeah. uh, even now that it's your second time here, yeah. and you already know the power of Mexicans, I yeah. was going to say, we're a lot of Mexicans as well. Like, yeah. like, we, we love music, uh, electronic music, but also we are a lot of Mexicans, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so also, almost in, in Mexico City, we're almost 20 million people. Yeah, I looked it up today. It's like, yo, yeah, it's so crazy. That where, makes sense, no? Like my, my city where I'm from in Germany called Hamburg, maybe I'm lying, but it's like plus minus, but it's like one million people. And I would say it's a big city. And yeah, I yeah. came here and looked, I, was like, I think it's like even 22 million people. Yeah, and the traffic is crazy. But, yeah. but uh, at the end of the day, it's good for artists like yourself because there's a lot of uh, people you can get your music to. Totally. And um, do you, people got to know you because of TikTok, right? Yeah. How, how was that process? Like, uh, how long did you start doing TikTok? Um, and why did you start doing it? Uh, did you think it was gonna do stuff like it has done with you or? N not at all. It's like funny, because like Nick, my manager, he, he's in the music industry for so long. And I was like, uh, like I said, struggling with music, like getting my music out to people and p so, so that people know it. He was like, you should use TikTok. I was like, no. TikTok is like a that's cringe a platform that's yeah. always full with funny videos and nobody cares. And it's like, you, when you start to hate something, you just do it because you're not successful at it. And I was like, mm. I was like seeing it myself. I was just like hating it so I don't have to do it. And he was like pressuring me all the time. Yeah, good advice for me. Yeah, and then he was like, you have to, you have to see it like this. TikTok is actually a free marketing tool 
because in any other way, like if you go to a label, they're going to give you a lot of money, they're going to pay for marketing, and then you can hope that it goes well. Mm -hmm. On TikTok, you have the chance to go viral every day and it yeah, costs you exactly. zero money. And so it was clouds, it cost me zero money and it changed my life. So he was pressuring me and I was doing it. I was like starting and uh, posting videos, with it, but it didn't work at all. But um, I had like no other option because I was thinking like, how can I get my music out? Because I didn't have any label at that time that could help me. Yeah. So I was like, keep posting it. And then I saw um, through the first song called Paper Planes that it worked. I was like seeing it's actually, it's definitely the sound that is working. The music has to be good, but, but it's also the video. Because I posted sometimes the song five times. It didn't work at all. Yeah, on, but, on TikTok, right? Yeah. But on the sixth time it worked, like on clouds. The sixth video went viral. The first five won not at all. Okay. Like, Cause I remember like posting clouds in you know, like 2000 re uh, views in the beginning. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I shouldn't post that yeah. song. It's like, luckily I posted it again. It depends on the video. As yeah. You say. And it's like always, you have to give like people like a tagline. Like the cool thing is when I did clouds, I really did it in a train. I finished the song there and I posted it and, and, and I think because I posted a video with like, I just did this beat on a train. Mm. And people are like a little bit like, okay, wait, now I want to listen to it because yeah. why he did it in a train. Uh -huh. And I think that's how you have to think like, there's like people on their phone scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. You have to get their attention in the first second. Yeah. It's either the music or in the best case, it's the video and the music. And I think you have to, to, to just be creative about it. Yeah, so my, that's, my, um, that's a thing we talk a lot, a lot in the podcast. Yeah. So always, yeah, as you say, the first second is important. Yeah. And also there's very good creators, like content creators yeah. that do really good videos. Yeah. And their music is not that good. Yeah. So they can get like maybe good views, but maybe they wouldn't uh, fill out like a, an arena for yeah. people, you know? So I think that you you know how to do the videos and have good music. Yeah. So that's a, like the easiest formula. You yeah, know? totally, totally. So you it were... It's both. It, yeah. I feel like the music needs to be good. That's like the first point. If the music is that good, then the video doesn't have to be that great. But I think if you can, co can combine both, then it's awesome. But it's like you said, if the music isn't great, but the video is awesome, it won't help you. Yeah, so everything, basically everything, you, every attention you've got, yeah. gotten has been from TikTok? Oh, everything, everything. Yeah. Because like in the... In the past, um, I had a label who like helped me get my music on Spotify playlist, but it doesn't move that much. Like you get a thousand clicks, but that's it. But like TikTok really, really helps. And, yeah. and the cool thing about TikTok is it happens so quick. I like uploaded another song that I have. It's like a remix of a French song. I uploaded it four days ago. I woke up the next day, I had like 200K views. Now I think it's like 980, so it's like close to a million views. It's like no other platform makes it possible yeah. to get like such a virality in such a short moment. And then, like people texting you, you're all on my for you page. It's like, <laughs> wow, it's, it's crazy. It's, yeah, 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 for me even. Yeah, like every time I go out and people say like, oh, I was, you, I saw you on my for you page. It's crazy for me. It's like, yeah, why? Yeah. Like I'm doing this on my bedroom, you know? Yeah. And then people see it. It's, it's like the cool thing you do it at home or like in your living room. In, yeah. I don't know. And then suddenly the whole world sees it. But that's such a cool thing about TikTok. Yeah, that's cool. You, uh, I was uh, asking about the attention. Yeah. What's the craziest thing that has happened to you because of your music on TikTok? I think uh, Mexico, 100%. Really? So like, I would say like two things. The, the craziest thing was definitely the, the first show in Mexico because I wasn't used to that. Mm -hmm. And I got like the fame all digital. So you can call it fame, but like the, the hype. Yeah. You see, but you only see like digital numbers on Spotify. Wow, I have so many clicks. Mm -hmm. But then you go into the real life. I was like going to Mexico on the first show. And it's just like going along the street and people ran to me. They built like a whole, we, we needed security so I could walk. I was like... Yo, this is. This is crazy, I, yeah. I felt like Justin Bieber for like an hour. It's like, yo, that's crazy. What's happening? Yeah, yeah. So that was like the first moment. Was like, yo, this app changed my life. So it, it didn't happen to you before Mexico, and the no, not at all. No, nobody knew me. Oh, nobody. That's crazy. And now, like, when I go like to my hometown, there's like here and there someone when I go like for drinks with my friends. They're like, mm -hmm. hey, wait, I know you. Hey, I want to go to your concert. And it's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. But like Mexico is... It's like the crowd, you know? Yeah. Like German people are a little bit more reserved, but Mexican also. people are very emotionally what I love. Mm -hmm. Like they bring you presents. They, it's, it's just, it's a very warm, how do you call, how do you call it? Hard, warm country, mm -hmm. if you can say yeah. it like that. And the second thing was when Ellie Goulding texted me on Instagram because she was... Um, I think she was seeing Lose It All on her TikTok and then DM'd me if she can sing on the song. 
And it's like, wait, I'm the little guy from Germany, and suddenly Ellie Gooding's texting me, and For then me? I, yeah. And, yeah, and then I got the chance, uh, got the chance to meet her in um, London. I was like, that's everything through TikTok. For me, that's crazier even. It's like because like with the Mexican people, yeah, it's something that you you had to realize, yeah, you know that people would uh, know you, yeah. But for Ellie Goulding to text you, I, I feel like that doesn't happen. That, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> random, and it's like a big compliment. In general, how, yeah. how many people do you think she d DMs to make songs with? I mean, one, Maybe, yeah, <laughs> and that was you. That was so cool. I I saw that TikTok and I was like, dude. It's like wow, it's actually happening. So you flew, you flew from your hometown to yeah. To so London she to was like texting me, "I love lose it all," but she was in my requests, so I didn't saw it. Then she double texted me, and it's like, wait, I, I left actually Ellie Golding on red, <laughs> but then she was texting me again, and then and then it's like, wait, what should I reply? So I replied in the cringiest way and said like, wow, this must be a miracle because she had that song <laughs> "Miracle" with Calvin Harris at that time. Yeah. And then she left me on red for two days. I was like, no, I fucked oh, it up, shit. Yeah. You were so nervous. <laughs> yeah, I was super nervous. And then she um, DM'd me again and said like, yo, um, are you cool if, um, if I can sing in a song? If you don't like it, you can definitely say no. It's like, you can do it 100%. And then we just kept texting and then she was inviting me to London. So we recorded there, her vocal, we did it. I still hope it will come out, I'm not sure. You, you still what, sorry? I, I hope that the version will will get released officially. Mm -hmm. I still hope that, but it was just like a crazy experience because then you're in the studio with her, and it was like it all started in January, and it's yeah. not like not even a year passed by since now. And how, and how is she like uh, personality? Very towards? nice. It's yeah. like funny. It's like always like I can compare with Messi because Messi always doesn't also feels like he doesn't know that he's messy and Ellie Goulding it's the same for her yeah. she's just there like a regular that's the way it has being. to be that's the way it has to be you know yeah in general okay. totally I, I don't I, I, for me it's like cringy when you meet people that has a lot of followers you mm -hmm. know and they act like they're superior that's like that's yeah that's not not the way also I, I, I've seen that a lot of international DJs have played your, your music right yeah uh, uh, Tiesto ones? played it Tiesto, Tiesto played it there was actually at that time crazy things were happening because on the one side the chain smokers were texting me. It's like, okay, that's crazy. Why? Then it was like, just like, yeah, yeah I love your music. And then um, um, there are like two guys, Shrews Haggard and Alex Paul. And Alex Paul was like posting clouds all the time. Then another song came out of mine called Lost My Mind. He was posting that. So we exchanged numbers, were in contact. And suddenly I was like pre, pre gaming with my friends drinking beer. And I could look at my phone, True Taggart, FaceTime video. The, the guy from Chainsmokers? Yeah, the singer. Yeah. And I was like a little bit like dizzy in my head, but he was calling me. He was like, because I sent him once a demo that I like. It's like, yeah, it's like a little sketch. Maybe you like it. It's like, yeah, I love it. And then he tried something on it. And I was like, like all my friends, I was like watching the of course. like this. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like talking to him. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's great. But like, I didn't even know what to say because everything was so random. So I, um, I was like texting with them. Then suddenly someone texted me, "Yo, Tiesto did a remix of um, Clouds and post uh, and, and like played it." Where and did he play it? I think it was also in Mexico. He played it there. Oh really? Did yeah. See? And then um, I was like texting. Was like, "Yo, that's crazy." I was like, "Yeah, um, I love the song." Are you texted Tiesto? Yeah. And he replied. Yeah. And then, and then it's like, "Wow, what's happening?" We also <laughs> exchanged numbers. And then I, and, and then I was in, in Ibiza. And I was like, yeah, um, I saw you playing in the beat. So yeah, come over. So he was like inviting me backstage to his room. Ooh. I was like meeting Tiesto and he's such a nice guy. And he's like in the industry for so long. Yeah, I'm just he's like, a legend. I have like so, so much respect for people like him. Because yeah. like he's doing it for maybe 30 years now, but he's like giving younger people the chance and writing them. He's, 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 and his music is still good. Like yeah. he keeps evolving with the industry. And imagine yeah, how long like he can keep his uh, level of success. Yeah, it's that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Super nice. So Chainsmokers nice. texted you. Uh, Tiesto invited you. We have Ellie Golding. Ellie Golding. Who else? <laughs> did I? Did I? I think nobody on that kind of level that is like on that. But the, these three are definitely like the craziest ones. Yeah, and and there's gonna be maybe a um, a moment when it's gonna be normal. You know, you're gonna be DMing like people and. Yeah, just try my song, see if you yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think collapse. that's like the best stage of an evolving or like an upcoming artist if you have these moments. Because mm -hmm, these are like the most exciting ones. Yeah. 
So yeah, congrats on everything. Yeah, Thank you. That's crazy because <laughs> I'm like I'm talking like for, to someone that started doing TikTok with the yeah. music, and now it's like these stories are crazy. Yeah, that's why people should start TikTok if they have music or any project. And I think that's a yeah really really good opportunity. I mean, like even even people that don't even do music, it can be like acting or yeah, comedians. It's like yeah. they blew up on a on one video, and suddenly they can play shows everywhere. Yeah, it's it's cool. So for me, if you think you're talented with something and you're shy and not doing anything about it yeah. on content, you should, you should start because you're going to uh, do, do, do good. And I tried it 10 years without social media and then it helped. Yeah. I also saw I, every time I do a podcast, I check the social media of the... Yeah. And, and I saw that Gary B follows you. You know who Gary B is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, How was that, that? That's super random. Like... I think two or three weeks ago, he got a message and says like, I'm proud of you. He texted you? Yeah. Oh my, because it's super funny. I actually have to show you the screenshot. Yeah, in 2000, send it to me because. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can send it to you. In 2017, I messaged him because I was reading one of his books because I needed like motivation to like do more. Mm -hmm. And then I sent him a message it's like, yo, Gary, we, I just want to offer you. I have like music. If you like want to use it for one of your videos or your vlogs, you can just use it mm -hmm. that was 2017 no response yeah. five years six years later i got a message back two three weeks ago i'm proud of you and then i was thinking maybe he has someone that like hands his dms no no he, he, he he's the one that checks it is, yeah. is he the one yeah but uh, but that was like the crazy part because he it's like funny to see 2017 i text him ask him for help then he maybe sees it now or like appear on his for you page and it's like, yo, look what happens like six years ago, six years later. So this was kind of kind of fire. And I text him. It's like, yo, I have no idea if you're even going to reply now my message, I reply to my other message. But thank you for for being there. And it's like, yeah, sure. It's so crazy because uh, I started TikTok because of Gary Vee. Oh, so I every time I talk about with someone about Gary Vee, they yeah. always say the same like, yeah, because of that guy, I started doing something. And it's crazy because I feel like everybody's everybody has like a different character. I really like when people talk to me. Like I think Gary Vee talks in a very passive, aggressive way to like motivate you. Is like mm -hmm. like go do it. He doesn't say like oh yeah, look for yourself. I think I'm more a type of guy that likes that kind of motivation. I think other people don't like it. Mm -hmm. Like a friend of mine doesn't like it that much. But if somebody like is like close to insulting me to do stuff, <laughs> then I'm like yeah, okay, now I'm gonna, You're do, gonna it. do it. And, and he does that. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a very good uh, uh, anecdote. Anecdote. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for so now let's go back to music. You're playing in Mexico. We already talked about that you came uh, for the first time. It was a crazy yeah. Ex experience. Yeah. Now you can, you come for the second time and you're gonna play in an arena, yeah. right? Uh, where yes. uh, there's wrestlers from Mexico. Exactly. You rented exactly. that for everyone who wants anyone who would like to see the concert, right? So we we rented a wrestling arena. It was actually a funny thing because we were thinking, so we're going to be in Monterey tomorrow on Saturday for the festival. And we were like, we were like thinking we should actually stop by Mexico City and play a show. Mm -hmm. And then we were like talking around what, what could it be. And the problem is with the car wash, it made so much noise that like the owner had very like su super much troubles with the police. Like he was always like fear of like yeah. losing his license. It was like, okay, this is not cool. We can't yeah, do this yeah. anymore. And... It's actually hard if you're like not Mexican and you talk to as a foreigner to Mexican people. Yo, can I play in your store? Or can I? like of it's, course yeah. they say no. And, and, and that like, doesn't. It doesn't. It's not as common here. Yeah, as totally. in Germany maybe. Yeah. So we were thinking about okay, what well, what can we do? And then we found this wrestling arena, and it's like we can do this, but it's gonna be expensive. So because I have to pay it, it's like n not, nobody that steps in for that and pays it. Mm -hmm. I was like, do you want to do it? And I've like, for some reason, I felt like not guilty, but I felt like I have to give Me Mexico something back because now I'm playing a worldwide tour, but without Mexico, I couldn't even do it. Oh, really? Yeah, because because when I look at my Spotify, like Mexico really helped with everything. Mm. I was like, okay, we should see this as an giving something back moment. And then we did this wrestling arena, and it was like funny because I didn't know that it's. Um, cause I'm a big Ray Mysterio fan. I had like a t-shirt oh, really? when I was like 16 <laughs> and it was like seeing people having all these shirts and all these masks in that, in that arena. It's like a very common thing there. Right. Yeah. yeah. For the type of wrestling. And, uh, yeah, then we decided to play it in the wrestling arena. That's so cool. 
um, for everyone. I, I wanted to talk about quickly about the first time you came. I yeah. went to your show. Uh, we were talking this about uh, before recording, but yeah, um, I, I was also surprised to see that many people. Yeah, right. So I got in on the second show. You played ah, two times. I got yeah. in on the second one. Yeah. But the, when the first one was playing, I went to the store. You know, there was a store uh, next to the like the car wash. Mm, I don't know. I, we, I went there just to get a beer, and there was a yeah. line of people uh, going in and out. Yeah. And suddenly it started like uh, like an earthquake. Yeah, people said that it actually the, started the, an earthquake, right? The the round was like moving like this, and the st uh, stop uh, light stop light from the for the cars, you know. Yeah, it was moving. And then we are really paranoid because here in Mexico, it's, it, we have a lot of earthquakes all the yeah. time. So we're like paranoid. And everyone was like this. And then we realized it was the sun clouds and people were jumping. Yeah. Like 50 meters away. <laughs> and everything was shaking. It was so fucking crazy. Because I couldn't believe it. In the, after the show, my manager was talking to me. It's like, did you know the building was shaking? And I was like... No, because I don't know. I didn't even realize. No, because like, you were jumping, so you don't feel it. But if if you're like on the ground, you feel the, like the movement. It's crazy. Imagine a song causing an earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are, what are your uh, expe expectations for for tonight? Um, I mean, this is gonna get out um, after tonight. But just to see yeah, how, yeah, how totally. you were thinking. Um, go. I think it's gonna be amazing. Because like with Mexico, no, it's just like they're gonna party to every song I'm gonna play. It's it's very. Mexican people are very honest, which I like. They like really give everything, and I give uh, and I give everything. I think it's gonna be probably the top, the top, the top of the nights again. Yeah. And every time I think, oh, this was a cool gig, then I think back of Mexico. I was like, oh damn, I think Mexico <laughs> was still better. It's like I tried to get above it. So today is the goal to get even a greater show. But it's also more people today. Yeah. Because today, how, how much people? I think this day arena can take 2,500 people, but we had like too much um, registrations. Which How was many do you know? Maybe like five or 6,000 people. <laughs> yeah, next time you can do a show and charge a little bit. I yeah. have a lot of, yeah, like in a maybe, bigger space. Yeah, I can pay the next time too, but like, yeah, maybe we could do like ticketed shows for the next time. And tomorrow you said you play in Monterey, it's gonna be your, your biggest festival you played in? Um, I think so, like yeah. capacity-wise and the amount of people that are coming, I think it's going to be the biggest one. Okay. And it's also funny because the difference is when I play a festival in Germany or somewhere else, they're like, there are people that DMing me, wow, I'm so hyped to see you. But when I post, I'm going to be in Monterey, like the mm. whole DMs were full. We're going to be first row. It's like, that's so cool. That's to so see. cool, yeah. Any new, any new music you have, you're going to play or something? And I'm going to play a lot of unreleased music today. I'm also going to drop um, an EP with six songs in exactly four weeks i think okay so it's like cool to see the reaction and then like dropping it a couple yeah. weeks later so that's professional fire. style yeah the setup today is going to be the same as the one in monterey yeah yeah it's going to be dj players and then um we have a lighting guy and all that so okay yeah, yeah. Yes. you have to but the cool thing is this time everybody that has a like you have to have a ticket to get in mm -hmm. so there's no line like the yeah. people are afraid of not getting in, but that's that's better. Okay. So we are not like afraid of getting a show cancelled because like the first show was cancelled then. Because mm -hmm. I was I was remember playing the first set at the first pop up after twenty minutes. It's like Levi, I think we can't play any longer. Quickly change the crowd. Then we start playing. I think after ten minutes, it's like you have to shut it down. Yeah. Police is here. It was very very short. Yeah. And, and and they say like it's not like police in Germany. It's they, they are more. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Strict it's, here. It's shady. Sometimes, <laughs> and uh, f uh, any plans for your for your future? Like, what are you? What do you want to do in life? What's your goal? Um, I think I definitely want to sell out Red Rocks at some point. Okay, I'm gonna play there as an opener next week, so I hope that to play. Oh, that. really? <coughs> oh, sorry. Don't worry. With uh, who, uh, who's gonna play there? Uh, Griffin. Okay. So Griffin is the main act together with Lost Frequencies, and yeah. So the big dream is to play Red Rocks at some point. I just don't know, but I saw a video of Mumford and Sons playing there six years ago, and I saw a YouTube video. I was like, "Wait, is this location even real?" Mm -hmm. Then I got invited by Griffin to open for them. I was like, "Okay, That's this is crazy. the main goal," because this is like a childhood dream to yeah. play there once, to play like a headline show Oof. there. And you're gonna, you're, yeah, you're gonna start doing like meeting all the DJs because you're gonna start opening. Yeah. Because sometimes, like for example, I had the there's DJs in Mexico called Le Twins. They mm -hmm. played on Tomorrowland, and they also like they always say like. 
the relationships you start doing with other international DJs yeah. are really like, you're doing the same as them. So it's part of like the, the community you are. Totally. So they're, they're, they become your friends, no? So that's like yeah. a little bit crazy to think about. It's like, yeah, your buddy lost frequencies, your buddy... Yeah, yeah. Which, is, which is crazy in kind of way because they're, they're huge. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's everything for today. It was really interesting uh, to hear about the stuff you've been doing because sometimes people only see the videos. Yeah. You listen to the music. Totally, and, totally. And don't know what's going out uh, like behind. Yeah. So yeah, the, um, congrats on everything and your success, and we hope Thank to you. have you again, Mexico City, bigger shows every time. Fingers crossed, every yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if you want to see say your um, social media so people can go look you up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So go follow me on social media. It's Bund on TikTok and Bund Music on social media. B U N T. Yes, B U N T. The thank the German guys. accent was there. The German accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking up with my English, and see you next time. See you. Bye bye.